Jess, baby. I need you to sock it to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would love somebody to sock it to me, Brother Chase. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'd be great to receive, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. You know, so um, okay. let's do a mutual socking. Okay. Yeah. That's, what I, that's what I like yeah. to ask, a mutual socking. This is A Course in Miracles. Welcome to A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles. Um, the Course in Miracles teaches that a miracle is a correct perception teaches that a miracle is a correct perception. So basically, the Course in Miracles is saying, if we have a correct perception, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the humor, the people miss the humor of it. Think about that. A miracle is us having a correct perception of something. That's a miracle. And the introduction to the Course in Miracles goes something like this. This is a Course in Miracles. It's a required course. Only the, only the time you take the Course in Miracles is voluntary. Only the time you take the Course in Miracles is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. Free will just means that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. Free will doesn't mean that you can establish the curriculum. Free will doesn't mean that I can establish the curriculum. Free will doesn't mean I can establish the curriculum. Free will doesn't mean you can establish the curriculum. Free will doesn't mean you can establish the curriculum by which you will know permanent happiness for yourself or love, or joy, really. Free will doesn't mean that I figure out how to be happy. Free will doesn't mean that I figure out how to be happy. Free will doesn't mean I figure it out how to be happy. It just means I can be willing to learn what it takes to be happy as much as I want to learn at any given time. There are certain rules for happiness. I can decide how much of that I want to take at any given time, but I really can't establish the rules for permanent happiness. Then it says, the Course doesn't aim at teaching the meaning of love, for the meaning of love is beyond what can be taught. Nobody can teach you the meaning of love. But the Course does aim, however, at, this is the purpose of the Course, in case you're wondering what the purpose of the Course is. It says, the purpose of the Course is to remove the blocks to the awareness of the presence of love. I, I want all the blocks that keeps me from knowing joy and happiness and love removed. So the purpose of the Course is to remove the blocks, the obstacles, to what you really want. The purpose of the Course is to and guess what? I found, I found out that the obstacle to my happiness had my social security number. <laughs> it was me. So the course aims at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. Love's presence is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear. The opposite of love is fear. The opposite of love is fear. So you don't fear me and love me at the same time. You don't fear me and love me at the same time. You don't fear me and love me at the same time. I don't fear you and love you at the same time. Fear is the opposite of love. Fear is the opposite of love. Love has no fear in it. Love has no fear in it. Love has no fear in it. Love has no anger in it. Love has no anger in it. Love has no jealousy in it. Love has no jealousy in it. Love has no attack in it. Guess what else I found out? I haven't experienced real, true, unconditional, permanent God love at a conscious level yet. I've never seen a person in my life that told me that they loved me, that I didn't also experience what appeared to be some levels of anger, fear, jealousy, insecurity, <laughs> scripts, and everything else. I don't know about you, but that's my experience. Yeah. So you know what I did? I made it normal. Uh, yeah. I told myself, well, it's normal to feel that way mm -hmm. in love. But actually what I was doing was I was allowing love, not allowing love. 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 That's what was re what's really going on. Fear, not allowing love. Joy, not allowing love. Resisting love, accepting. Willing to have it, resisting having it. Willing to have it, resisting having it. Willing to have it, resisting having it. That's all that's going on all day long. Willing to have what I want, resisting having what I want. Willing to have what I want, resisting having what I want. So then it goes on to say, um, love is our natural inheritance. It's just, that's, that's what we deserve to have. That's what we're going to have. That's our inheritance. That's good news. Since the opposite of love is fear, but what is all encompassing, which is love, if it's everything, there's no opposite to everything. There's no opposite to everything. There's no opposite to everything. So this course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. I'm Dr. Raj. 
And today, I'd like to tell you that this course can be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. That's the whole course of miracles. If it's real, if I have a real love and a real relationship, can it be threatened? No. If I have a real prosperity consciousness and an abundance consciousness, can it really be threatened? No. If it's real, it can't be threatened. If it's unreal, if it's unreal, it doesn't exist anyway. How can you tell if what you have is unreal? It ceases to exist. How can you tell that your body is ultimately unreal? It ceases to exist. That's why I've been really enjoying mine. <laughs> I won't always have it. So I had to stop attacking it with guilt and fear and the idea of sin. That's a really good one. Nothing real can be threatened, nothing <coughs> unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. So the cause can be summed up in, in, with these two sentences. So a two minute chant to go something like this would be take a breath, take a breath, take a breath, oh, mm, oh, mm. here we go. Nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. 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 Herein lies the peace of God. So the only guidelines to the Course of Miracles is that you need not believe it. If you're here for the first time, the only rules to my class, the Course of Miracles class is, you need not believe it. You need not accept it. <laughs> you need not even welcome it. Got that? Got it. You don't have to accept what I say, welcome what I say, or believe what I say. Um, some of the things I say may startle you. Some of the things you're simply not going to hear. You're going to see my lips moving, but you're going to swear I'm talking English and you won't know what the hell I just got you to say. Okay. Um, it's really not about judgment and analyzing anyway, if you use it, you will see that it works. That's the way the course is. If you use it, you'll see that it works. Uh, it uses Christian terminology to describe universal spiritual things. So if you've got a lot of charge around Christian terminology, you're going to be charged. Sorry. That's the way the book was written. That's the way the book was written. Uh, it has its own definition of all the words, none of the traditional words per se but it uses Christian terminology, like Holy Spirit. <laughs> like when the Course says Holy Spirit, it's talking about the voice for truth inside you. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. yes, the yes, voice yes. for truth inside you, the voice for God inside you, the voice for love inside you. So the, the section I'm going to cover today is called the acceptance of your brother. And the Course does not define a brother as a male person. A brother is a man that is joined with yours. So the acceptance of a man that's joined with man, the acceptance of you. The accept so I'd like for you to think of someone that maybe, maybe right now you're having a tough time feeling really like you can accept them. You got one? Mm -hmm. One person that you tend to avoid or don't really particularly care for their energy or joining with them or connecting with them. So I'm going to read the paragraph and then I'm going to do the paragraph and then we'll go to the next one. It's on page 173 if you got the Course in Miracles book. Uh, so, did you wake up this morning and ask yourself, who am I today, and what grand and glorious adventures am I having? I'm going to ask that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, 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 and are you having any grand and glorious adventures? Um, ask yourself every day, how does it get better than this? And as soon as you receive something that you enjoy, say, how can it get better than this? Uh, if you want what you want to show up really quickly, ask yourself, what would it take for whatever or whoever I wanted to show up in ways I can't even imagine? What would it take for this to show up? What would it take for this to show up? 
and don't try to answer it yourself. Just ask. I love that kind of stuff. So I keep hearing that there's a higher power, a spiritual power, something greater than us, something that we're connected to that is supposed to like, really be in charge, take care of things, guide us, help us have the kind of life that we want. Anybody else heard that rumor? That there's a higher power. Okay, so would you like to become aware of a higher power in your own life? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, well, the first thing it says is, well, how can you become increasingly aware of the Holy Spirit in you except the effects of the Holy Spirit? Like, how am I going to be aware of the love that you have for me unless I see the effect of it and I show you the effect of it? You know, if I say I care about you, those are words. But if I actually behave in a way that show you that I do, then you would be seeing the effect of the love I said that I have for you. And wouldn't you then believe that the love was there? Talk <coughs> is cheap. I live by, you know, action speaks louder than words. That's my motto, especially when I got into new thought, new age, and new age people and new thought people. You better get that one quick. Because we that are growing in consciousness and we're trying to open up, we are quick to say really wonderful, beautiful words. <laughs> but follow it up with very little action sometimes. But lots of, I love you, I appreciate you, you're important to me, I value you, we are all one, I, I love everybody. But how can I be aware of the love in you except by the effects? How can you be aware of the love in me except by the effect? So wherever you see Holy Spirit, you can substitute the word love. Wherever you see ego in the course, you can substitute the word fear. So if you want to make the course have a modern translation, you just substitute the two words what? Love and fear. So how could I do that? Here's a practical example. How can you become increasingly aware of the love in you except by its effects? See the difference? How can you be more aware of the love in you except by its effects? You cannot see Holy Spirit with your eyes, nor hear the Holy Spirit with your ears. So since you're not seeing the invisible and you're not hearing the invisible, how then can you perceive the Holy Spirit at all? Good question. I like these questions. How can I become aware that you love me if I don't <coughs> see any effects? And I can't see the invisible with my eyes and with my ears and my physical senses. So how do I perceive this God force at all? How do I perceive this creative force at all? He says, well, this is how. If you inspire joy, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a wow. <laughs> and others react to you with joy. Yeah. And this is the kicker. Ooh. Even though you are not experiencing joy yourself. <laughs> there must